What's a bizarre historical event you can't believe actually took place? Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. In 1920, President Paul Deschanel of France fell through the window of the train while traveling on the Orient Express. He stumbled up to the nearest signal box in his pajamas and told a signalman that he needed help and that he was the president of France. The signalman reportedly replied, And I'm Napoleon Bonaparte. The Cadaver Synod In AD 897, Pope Stephen VI had his dead rival Pope Formosus exhumed and put on trial. Stephen had a deacon speak on the dead Pope's behalf. Naturally, Formosus was found guilty. Stephen ordered that two fingers Formosus used for blessing people cut off and his corpse thrown in the Tiber River. The astronomer Tycho Brahe had a pet moose that he used to get drunk with. One time, he brought it to a dinner party at a friend's house, but sadly the moose did not survive the night. Once again, the poor moose got drunk on beer and died from a nasty fall down a set of stairs. Tycho Brahe also lost his nose in a duel, so he wore a prosthetic nose made out of metal. Some sources say brass, others say it was a gold-silver alloy. He was also employing a small court jester named Jep that he believed to be clairvoyant. Battle of Tsushima In 1905, Russian Baltic fleet sails the long way, 16k miles and 7 months, started by them opening fire on British fishing boats mistaken for Japanese vessels in the North Sea, sank their own ships while conducting target practice then were destroyed by the Japanese fleet upon arrival. They mistook the Japanese ships for Russian and signaled them instead of firing. The Halifax Explosion One hundred years ago, two ships did a shit job of passing each other while entering leaving Halifax Harbor in Nova Scotia. One of them was loaded with explosives destined for World War I. They collided, and one of them burned for a while, then exploded. The blast was a two-thirds again larger than the one we saw in Beirut last year. Thousands died or were blinded by shattering windows. There was a local tsunami which followed a brief moment where the seabed was exposed to air, and then a monster snowstorm covered the relief effort in snow. Largest human-made explosion even until the nuclear bomb, and I think it remains the largest maritime accident ever. During the siege of Tenochtitlan, the conquistadors built a trebuchet. However, the conquistadors, being an exploratory expedition, had not brought any military engineers with them, so they winged it. Surprisingly, they did build a trebuchet, which fired exactly one shot, directly upwards, which promptly came down and smashed the trebuchet. This event is chronicled in both the journals of the conquistadors present as well as the Aztec records. The time when Emperor Napoleon Bonaparte escaped from the island where he was imprisoned on after his army was defeated. He snuck back into France under the nose of King Louis the 17th or 18th and literally every royal guard and roadblock from Marseille to Paris and when he was actually caught just outside Paris, he managed to persuade the soldiers, who just so happened to be former Bonapartists, to escort him into Paris where he managed to successfully cause the king to flee on top of raising a full army to rage war against Europe again. The only time in history an emperor took back an entire country just by waving his hat. Carassius. Everything about him is boss, a Gallo-Belgic peasant who rose up the military ranks to become a Roman general, successfully fought actual pirates after waiting for them to raid their targets and so became insanely wealthy. When he found out Emperor Maximian had caught wind of this and had ordered his execution, he flipped him the bird, sailed into what is now Great Britain, bribed round four entire legions to join him with the money he'd nabbed, and set himself up in London as the real legitimate emperor, yo. Why has nobody made a film about the man yet? Seriously, I'd watch that. Mel Blanc, the voice actor who voiced every male character on Looney Tunes, as well as characters like Barney Rubble on the Flintstones and Mr. Spacely on the Jetsons, was in a head-on collision driving his sports car in a dangerous intersection known as Dead Man's Curve in Los Angeles in 1961, the same Dead Man's Curve from the Jan and Dean song. His legs and pelvis were fractured, and he was left in a coma. For weeks, doctors tried everything to get Blank to wake up. Eventually, when things were looking bleak, one of his neurologists decided to address one of Blank's characters instead of Blank himself, asking him, How you feeling today, Bugs Bunny? After a slight pause, the previously comatose Blank answered, Eh, just fine, Doc. Doc, how are you? 
Noblank made a full recovery. When he got out of the hospital, he sued the city of Los Angeles for $500,000, finally leading to the city reconstructing Dead Man's Curve. The assassination of Archduke Franz Ferdinand, catalyst for World War I. Conspirators throw bombs at motorcade which miss but injure others. An hour later, Ferdinand was going to visit the injured at a hospital and his driver made a wrong turn and stalled the engine right in front of a deli. A deli one of the conspirators had gone to eat and lay low. He came out and shot the Archduke and his wife, sparking an international crisis and World War I. Lincoln stopping a fight with a gentleman before it started with a broadsword. Most people know Lincoln was incredibly tall, but he was also immensely strong. A lifetime of grit, graft, and chopping wood made him wiry frame tight and corded muscles. A gentleman of parliament challenged Lincoln to a duel for his honor one day. Lincoln picked weapons, broadswords. Lincoln showed up to the field of the duel the following day, and with one enormous one-handed swing overhead, lopped a sizable limb off a tree from a standing start. The gentleman backed out of the duel moments after witnessing the man dismember a tree as casually as one might be head a florid of broccoli. Napoleon was once attacked by a horde of rabbits. Basically, a rabbit hunt was set up to celebrate the treaties of Tillist, and they ended up amassing somewhere between hundreds and thousands of rabbits, accounts vary. Anyway, the day of the hunt, they set the rabbits in cages surrounding the area that they would be hunting in. They released them once everyone was set. But instead of being scared, the bunnies swarmed the hunting party. At first, they thought it was funny, but then it got overwhelming and Napoleon and the others had to flee from the bunnies in a coach. The Dancing Plague of 1518 So from what I remember about what I learned, a few people randomly just started dancing in the town center for no apparent reason, even seeming a bit distraught, not really having fun. Well, randomly, people started joining, seemingly against their will. I think it was reported that nearly 400 people were eventually involved and danced for literal days without stop. This event was apparently well documented, and a few people even died from literal exhaustion. Pretty much ended like it started too. Everyone just kind of stopped. Sometime in 1943, World War II, a German Tiger I tank was hit over 230 times by other tanks and anti-tank weapons in 7 hours. The tank crew of the Tiger only lost one out of its five members, and the Tiger was horrifically damaged, yet it still managed to drive over 10 kilometers back to a German outpost. Once they got to the outpost, they had to cut the crew out of the tank because all of the hatches were destroyed or stuck. Total damage of the tank? Transmission was destroyed, and only would work in second gear. All GM ports were destroyed. The commander's cupola was destroyed. The fuel was leaking. One track on the right side was basically falling off. The front left drive wheel broke and was spinning freely. In the end, the Tiger was a monument for the Germans for a while, then it was scrapped. No Kum Sok's defection of North Korea is actually one of the most badass real life movie things to ever happen. Dude got sick of North Korea and flew to the South Korean border at almost Mach 1, too far to be seen by North Korean or American radar. He landed at the closest American military base on the wrong side of the runway, with another jet landing at the same time on the other side, barely missing it. When he got out of his plane, he took an image of Kim Il-sung that was in the cockpit, tore it to shreds, and threw up his arms in surrender. He unknowingly got $100,000, which is almost $1 million today, by fulfilling Operation Moolah and lives as an American citizen to this day. The specific details of the Cuban Revolution are fascinating and not often talked about. The rebels were outgunned by something like 10 to 1 by the government. The yacht Castro and Che Grandma famously went on was overflowing with people and most of the rebels died upon landing. The CIA was possibly funding and arming the rebels at one point. There was a second rebellion that was anti-communist, far larger, and killed more people that ended in 1965. There was also a tractor with flamethrowers, and the rebels won a significant battle by derailing a train and throwing Molotovs at it. Also, most rebels seemed to be students, and Castro was originally going to be a lawyer. Regardless of where you stand on Castro, it's still a really interesting bit of history. Hmm. The Banquet of Chestnuts Basically, Cesare Borgia, a cardinal, set up this dinner party on October 30th, 1501 at the papal residence in the Vatican. In attendance were 50 honest prostitutes. Over the course of the meal, 
They were dancing and removing layers of clothing until they were nude. After dinner, they put the candles on the floor and dumped a bunch of chestnuts onto the floor as well. The prostitutes would pick them up and crawl around on the floor to the guests. It's also specifically noted that the Pope, assuming it's Pope Alexander VI, was watching this display. Then it seems there was what sounds like a sex contest. I don't remember the sex contest part, but seems to go along with the rest of the story. There's some contention regarding whether or not this actually took place, but it seems too specific to be made up, in my opinion. I learned about this in Eurosiv, a class I took more than 10 years ago, but I kept this tidbit all these years. Enjoy this useless piece of trivia. During the bombing of Nagasaki and Hiroshima, a man by the name of Sudatomu Yamaguchi managed in a feat of massive misfortune to be present at both atomic bomb detonations. He was working in Hiroshima for Mitsubishi Heavy Industries on an oil tanker when the first atom bomb was dropped on August 6th, the last day he was supposed to be in the city before returning home to his wife and infant son. He recounted watching the bomb go off, saying it looked like a massive magnesium flare going off. He dove into a ditch in the handful of seconds it took for the blast to reach him, which is probably what saved his life. The blast actually pulled him out of the ditch and tossed into a nearby potato patch. He came to later, the sky darkened by the debris kicked up by the blast, covered in second and third degree burns, and both of his eardrums were ruptured. He got up and managed to find his way to the Mitsubishi shipyard, where he found a couple of colleagues who had also survived, and together they spent the night in the bomb shelter. The next day, they found that miraculously a train still worked, so the survivors loaded in and taken out on the still burning ruins of Hiroshima by train and taken overnight to Nagasaki, August 8th. After stopping at the hospital to have his burns checked out, he went home. His mother thought him a ghost, come to haunt them when he first showed up, covered in burns and bandages as he was. Despite all this, Yamaguchi still woke up and went in to work the morning of August 9th and was immediately taken in to see the director of Mitsubishi to tell him what had happened. The director straight up didn't believe Yamaguchi, thinking he'd gone mad from his experience. That's when Yamaguchi saw the flash of light, exactly like the one in Hiroshima. He hit the ground just in time to dodge the worst of the glass exploding in a wave of sharp death from the shockwave. This time, However, due to Nagasaki's hilly topography and the design of the building he was in, he sustained only superficial injuries, but did get bathed in yet more radiation from the bomb, having been unfortunate enough to be within two miles of this blast as well. Yamaguchi leaves the broken skeleton of the building and immediately goes to find his wife and child. He goes home and nearly loses hope when he finds his house mostly reduced to rubble. However, in yet another fortunate twist of fate, his wife and their baby hadn't been home when the bomb went off. They'd been out looking for burn cream for Yamaguchi and had managed to take refuge in a tunnel which protected them for all but a few superficial injuries. Despite everything, Yamaguchi would live to the ripe old age of 93 and having nine children. The evacuation of the Czechoslovak Legion in which some 100,000 displaced Czech and Slovak soldiers stuck in the Soviet Union during the Russian Civil War escaped back home to Czechia and Slovakia by traversing in the other direction across the entirety of Siberia to the Pacific coast, fighting the Red Army along the way. They captured an armored train, had a naval battle in a lake, and seized control of almost the entire Trans-Siberian Railway, among other things. And, all in all, actually pulled off the evacuation rather successfully. In fact, they became so famous that their adventure directly helped promote the cause for free Czechoslovakia after World War I ended. I don't remember this 100% correctly, but apparently Julius, listen, it's Julio in my language, okay? Caesar was kidnapped by pirates, promised them they'd all be crucified. The pirates realized how much they had fucked up and kind of regretted their decision basically ended up taking Caesar on a cruise. They eventually became friends, and when he was rescued, if I recall correctly, he got them all crucified, but asked one of the guards to execute them quickly, when not in the middle of the public eye so they wouldn't suffer the pains of crucifixion. Nice guy. 